Assalamualaikum and hello to dear viewers and listeners. You are watching the YouTube channel Israr Tanoli the Researcher. Dear viewers, today we are going to discuss about oxymoron. Oxymoron is an important and significant figure of, figure of speech or a literary device. In this video, we shall be discussing the origin of oxymoron, definition, its common and literary examples. And towards the last of the video, we shall be discussing the functions of the oxymoron that oxymoron plays in the literary works. So, firstly, looking at the history of the oxymoron, as uh, many literary terms has got their origin in the Greek and, and Latin word, so oxymoron has got its origin in the two Greek word oxys and moros. It is the combination of two Greek words. Let's look. At them. First is oxys, which means sharp or pointed, and second is morus, which means foolish or dull. So together, these two words make a literary device oxymoron, which means which wordly means sharply dull. So oxymoron is a literary device that has been used across. Of different time periods of the history, it has been used in the Greek literature, then Latin literature, then it has been introduced in the English literature. William Shakespeare, John Donne, and many Romantic poets has immensely used this poetic and literary device. So, looking at the history, uh, sorry, looking at the definition of the oxymoron, Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary defined oxymoron as oxymoron is a phrase that combines two words that seem to be the opposite of each other. Here, the crux of definition lies that combines two opposite ideas, words, phrases, or sentences that are the opposite of each other and their meaning. So, we can define oxymoron in another way that oxymoron is that figure of speech that shows two contradictory ideas or that combines two different uh, words having two different meanings or two different phrases having two different meanings altogether. Now looking at the examples of the oxymoron and our today's and our day to day environment or day to day speeches. So first example that we have got is along together. Here these two words are two different words alone and together alone means single and together means people a group of people so it means that people that are physically present but emotionally they are distant from each other so two different uh, you know phrases or words are combined in order to create an effect or a stress in the writing and they create a positive and uh, and sometimes humorous meaning in the uh, writing so, and the second example is cruel kindness. Here you see two different ideas. The idea of this cruelness and kindness are a pole apart ideas, but they are put together in order to create emphasis. So this me uh, so th this is the beauty of oxymoron uh, that they put two uh, two uh, that they put two distant ideas, distant words, but Create a, uh, create a meaning out of them. Another example is cold fire. You see that fire, fire is not cold, but fire is always hot, but here it is being written as cold fire, a fire that has no effect. Sweet poison. We see that sweet, uh, that the substance is not sweet, it is bitter, it has not a sweet uh, you know more a uh, sweet taste, but it has a bitter taste. It leads us towards death. But here it is being said that sweet poison. Another example is dear enemy. How could be an uh, enemy is dear? They are an enemy can never be dear. So if this is the oxymoron which puts two distant ideas, words or phrases in order to create an empire. Now we are looking at some of the literary example of the oxymoron. Here you see parting is such a sweet sorrow. Sweet sorrow. It is being uh, taken from Romeo and Juliet written by famous 
Shakespeare. So in this sentence you can see how here that parting is such a sweet sorrow. How could be parting a sweet sorrow but it is being said in order to create a dramatic effect by Shakespeare. Another example you see from taken from the Shakespeare famous play Hamlet, I must be cruel only to be kind. Again you see the use of this phrase. I must be cruel only only to be kind. Here two distinct ideas, two distinct emotions are put together in order to create the dramatic effect in the writing. So this is the beauty of an oxymoron. After the examples taken from Shakespeare dramas, now we are looking at the, at some of the examples taken from the poetry. Firstly, we are looking at the poem uh, London written by famous romantic writer William Blake, where the poet writes, I wandered through a charted street, near where the charted Thames does flow, and mark and every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe. You could trace oxymoron in the last line of stanza, where marks of weakness and marks of woe, which uh, William Blake says are the uh, uh, you know, uh, are being clear, are visible and on the faces of the people of London where he roamed in the street of the London. So these are two different marks, two different ideas, two different emotions put together in order to create, a po uh, create emphasis, in order to elevate the poetic style. Another example you look at are uh, taken from the famous poem of romantic poet John Keats' poem or to Nightingale, where the poet says, Though west not born for dead immortal bird, no hungry generation dread thee down. Here, the poet uh, calls Nightingale immortal bird. You know, two different ideas, two different concepts. Birds are mortal. All the living beings and all the things being found in this universe are mortal. Here the poet calls the nightingale is immortal. So this is an oxymoron, meaning two contradictory things are put together. See, an, uh, see another example from the poetry, uh, from the poem A Storm on the Island, written by famous modernist writer Seamus Henney, where the poet says, we are bombarded by the empty air. Strange as if is as if is huge nothing. Sorry, here it is. Strange as it is huge nothing. Here and these nine you could see two oxymorons are being used. Firstly, we are bombarded by the empty air. Bombarded by the empty air, then Strange as it is huge nothing, huge and nothing. This is an oxymoron. Now we are looking at last in the last section of the video. Uh, what are the function of the oxymoron that oxymoron plays in across the literary work? So oxymoron gives different shades of the meaning, multiple shades of the meaning. It adds multiple layers of the meaning to the literary works. Then it creates humor, it poke fun, it creates a humor and it creates a dramatic effect in the literary works as we have seen in the Shakespearean uh, example that I have quoted. So, uh, and uh, another function is there to add, it adds the playful tune to the works and fourthly it enhances the reading and writing by creating an effect. So, dear viewers, this is all about oxymoron, its origin, definition, examples, and function. Do subscribe my YouTube channel, Israr Tanuli, the researcher for upcoming videos on literary terms and grammar series. Have a nice day. Thanks.